I'd like to call this meeting of the fellow city council to order. Would you please rise and join with me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing as Monsignor Michael Bliss from St. Philomena's leads us in prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we gather during this uh, change of seasons. Grateful for the, the nice weather, beautiful color of the trees, and uh, the abundant harvest that I think many enjoyed this year. And seeing our local farmers through them. We ask for your blessings upon them as they prepare their fields for the winter. And to uh, bless our families and communities as we head toward Thanksgiving. May it indeed be a, a happy one, a blessed one, a safe one for all of us and for our country. Please bless uh, our meeting now and our deliberations and the good efforts that we'll put forward from them in the weeks ahead. We ask all of this in thy holy name. Amen. 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 Roll call, please, Jill. Ms. Bo? Here. Ms. Lively? Here. Mr. Denise? Here. Mr. Woodham? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Mr. Burris? Here. Mr. Kuhn? Here. Mr. Broderick? Here. Mr. Brock? Here. And Mr. Piercy? We have a quorum. Thank you. Consent agenda, approval of documents and action items is listed. Claims report, claims dated October 24, 2023 through November 13, 2023. Meeting minutes, city council meeting minutes, October 23, 2023. Historic preservation commission meeting minutes, July 11th, 2023. Report, October 2023. Police report, uh, October 2023. Fire report, October 2023. Treasurer's report, August 31st, 2023. Uh, Treasurer's report, September 30th, 2023. Budget report, September 2023. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions of city staff? Yeah, Terry. We um, I think we skipped public participation. Oh, I did. We did. We did. <laughs> I've done that in a long time. Let's do public participation. Is there is anyone signed in? Yes, sir. Okay. Gosh, I made my first mistake this year. Wow. <laughs> and it was both of us. We both forgot. Dick Montgomery. Table, please. Council. I only have five minutes, Mr. Stoner, so you know I can't go too long anyway. I um I came today. Nothing that's on the, today's agenda, or even recent agendas, that I'm aware of. I wanted to speak about public safety uh, today. Um, and my name is Montgomery. I live at Fort and uh, this I want to speak about uh, safety of traffic and traffic flow on Kratz Road, on East Kratz Road in particular, near the high school, um, which was, you know, I just felt the timing was right with the recent accident that happened last Sunday morning uh, with the anhydrous tank breaking loose and then um, releasing gas and all that good kind of thing that happened. It just kind of brought out that uh, a lot of people, I, I don't, I believe the person was speeding. It's not unusual. It's very commonplace. And I've lived there 23 years now. Um, and I've watched the speeds increase over those 23 years, uh, particularly as uh, individuals who drive, who are driving down from the Marine from east to west. Um, it's not unusual, like I said, it's very commonplace. Uh, the thing that is a person who lives there often, of course, I'm recently retired, so I spend more time looking out my window than ever before in the last two years, 
that I'd like to admit. But um, so it's become a heightened awareness than ever because I'm home, you know, more often, obviously. Um, but it's this to me, the saddest part is that you would think that where I live, that uh, the, the folk that what you'd see is all high school kids speeding and it's not. I, I can see the people driving by. Um, it's a, it's unfortunately, it's a lot of parents with their children. Um, more often than not, and I have no numbers to back that up. I'm here to just throw out the idea that the city address it as something to study, to study the traffic flow on East Kratz Road with the accident being the, the asterisk point to make it, if you, let's say that that did happen during school and, and there was, you know, 150 whatever elementary children out on the playground when that gas was released. So my, I've just a number of bullet points I wanted to say why. Um, I've also noticed there's, uh, there's a, we also have a, a tr which has always been the case, you know, I'm, we, uh, we have a huge number of trucks with trailers. I don't know what has happened in Monticello with trailers about men and trailers. I don't get it, but uh, something's happened the last four or five years. I, thank God I don't have one, but it's something about pulling the trailer around. So we get them all on Kratz Road. There's, we get a lot of farm machinery, which is normal. The other thing about Kratz Road, is particularly from Pyatt Street, if you're familiar with that, from Pyatt Street down to Route 105, which is Market Street, is that not just during football games, but on a regular basis, there are cars parked on both sides of the road. We also are, are often closing Kratz Road for school events, which is fine too, but the, the, um, the, the propensity for that has increased dramatically over the last three or four years as well. The other thing I notice all the time, and I'm living down there, there are kids that walk across, not elementary, high school kids, all the time, depending on which event, whether it's a soccer game or actually the high school band kids walk across every morning and oftentimes in the evenings on a regular basis. So um, I can go on and on. I, uh, there are parking both sides, not just during events. That's my point. Um, I also want to say that I noticed that um, just recently, I hope I'm not talking, not too, going too long. I'm sure I'm on the time. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one of these in a minute. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I can ramp. Um, the the recent 911 practice event at the school. If any of you are aware, what they chose was a child getting hit by a car. That's what they simulated, and I think that's very real. And I believe that's exactly what's going to happen if we don't if we aren't proactive instead of being reactive to what's going on at Crash Road. I propose. I know nothing about speed limits. I would propose a 15 mile per hour speed limit from Pyatt Street down to Route 105. It, at least I would just consider it uh, as out there as an idea for the city to possibly look into as a, tra as a way to slow down the traffic flow. I mean, it's, the school is going to continue to grow as it continues to grow south. You know, the, pro the chances, the odds of an accident are just to increase. I really, I really don't think it's if, I just think it's a question of when. Thank you for your time and listening to me. Thank you for commenting. We have a motion and we have a second for the consent agenda. Are there any questions? It's under it's a standard. Oh, I sorry, did I forget? Oh, I forgot. I'm going home. Remote participation. This is an opportunity for the public to provide public comment to the presiding officer. The public comments must comply with ordinance 2014-02 and be limited to five minutes or less. At this time, members of the public are able to attend public meetings by web conference and to submit public comment by email, voicemail, through web conference. Maura, is there anyone on this evening? There is. Thank you very much. Now, can we do the consent agenda? Would that be okay with everybody? We can. Okay. We have a, a, a second. A second. Uh -huh. Any comments or questions of city staff? Hearing or seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Vogt? Yes. Ivory? Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to the mayor's report. Uh, Council persons, if you have a chance, please consider signing up to volunteer at one of the downtown events this holiday season. Callie Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a, a sign up that you can do remotely, yes, right? 
you, they got it. So please consider that. We, we have a problem getting enough volunteers to do things. And as a consequence, we don't have as many events as we used to have because it's hard to find enough people to, to man everything that has to happen for some of these things. So if you have a chance, check it out and see if you might be able to help out. We have a business opening this Friday. Sage City Market will be opening this Friday. The ribbon cutting will be at 10.30 uh, at 10.30 a.m. And then the, the store will close right at, or close, will open right after that. Owners Sarah and Wes Hornback were winners of the Monticello Boot Camp Grant for their storefront business plan, and we wish them the best. Some upcoming events, the Sangamon Valley CEO Investor Coffee is Tuesday, November 21st from 7.30 to 9 a.m. at 3R2. As a supporter of this program, I encourage you to stop in and meet this year's class, some bright young people doing a great job. <clears throat> Tickets are on sale for the Reds of Christmas annual shop walk in Monticello. Polar Express begins this Friday and runs the next four weekends in downtown. And the Letterman are going to be presenting a concert on Monday, December the 4th. It's a fundraiser for Willow Tree, and I think they still have some tickets available. If you might be interested in that, contact the folks up at Willow Tree. Okay, that's it. New business, mayoral appointments. I would like to propose following appointments. Planning and Zoning Board, Will Pontius, five-year term expires April 2026. Will, can you stand, please? Police Pension Board, William Kearney. Gonna, would you stand, please, so make sure everybody knows who you are? Yes, I'm not here. Not here. I didn't think that was him, but <laughs> <laughs> who that is. Man, I need that. I need an aspirin. <laughs> William Kearney. Uh, Monticello Fire and Rescue Department, Jason McLean, firefighter. Would you please stand? I, he was a band student of mine a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you a drummer? Yes. That's what I thought. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the mayoral appointments? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions? <clears throat> Hearing a seeing none, they have a roll call. Ms. Vogt? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Thank Mr. you very Cassis. much. Thank you for your willingness to serve. You didn't get them all? Got them all. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Ordinance 2023-58, an ordinance approving a local landmark designation for 214 South Charter Street. Monticello, Illinois, in accordance with Chapter 32 of the City of Monticello Municipal Code of Ordinances, <coughs> Historic Preservation Commission, and Landmark Designation. Are you speaking to that, Kelly? That would be me, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the session of the Presbyterian Church submitted an application for a local landmark designation <coughs> uh, with the Historic Preservation Commission. And as per um, ordinance and statute requirement, all adjacent property owners were notified and a public hearing was held at the Historic Preservation Commission meeting last week. Um, just to give you a little background, the uh, Presbyterian Church was constructed in downtown. So they were established in Monticello in the 1840s. They constructed their current location in downtown in 1906 and then did an addition as well in the 50s. The um, building type is the late Gothic revival style. Um, one of their, their things they're very proud of and our community is very proud of is they're one of the, um, they are the only remaining active church in our downtown. Um, so um, let's see, the commission voted to recommend at the public hearing, the commission voted to recommend approval of the local landmark designation based upon the following criteria. Number one, the property has significant value as part of the historic heritage or cultural characteristics of the community, county, state, or nation. And number two, the property has distinguishing characteristics of architecturally of, of architectural inherently valuable for, for study of a period type method of construction or use of indigenous materials. Um, you have in your packets uh, received a full summary of the application that denotes all the architectural details and some as well. Um, see the third local landmark in the city of Monticello. You notice, or you probably know, we already have three nationally listed historic districts. The local landmark allows um, just that uh, official local level of recognition that a property is historically significant to the community. It also requires a certificate of appropriateness anytime something beyond may just 
your standard maintenance um, occurs. So it offers that extra level of protection. And um, yep, that's it. Okay. Any comments or questions? Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 2023-58? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other comments, questions? Hearing or seeing them, may have a roll call, please. Ms. Boat? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to resolution 2023-59, a resolution authorizing the execution of the IMLRMA minimum maximum contribution agreement. Mora. <laughs> I'll try to speak loud. Okay. Uh, so annually we have to renew our liability insurance uh, for workman's comp and all the city liability and do them in Madison Street Council. This year the increase was 2%. It has been for the last three years. The four years before that we had no increase. So we just are required to do that for the mayor to be able to sign the agreement so to speak to lower our insurance rate. Okay. Any comments or questions? Is there a motion to approve resolution 2023-59? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any anyone think of anything? If not, Jill, roll call, please. Ms. Vogt? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 2023-60, Truth and Taxation Law Resolution. Harry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, state statute established procedures and requirements for determining the amount of money to be raised from property tax levy by a municipality in accordance with truth and taxation law. City Council must approve an estimated tax levy at least 20 days prior to the adoption of the final levy. <clears throat> if the estimated property tax levy is less than 105% of the prior year's levy, the city does, is not required to advertise its intent and hold the public hearing on the levy. Um, city administration has estimated the FY 2024 property tax levy to be $880,487, which is approximately 4.9% from this year's levy. Um, a, the ordinance, uh, which you have a copy of in one of the attachments, will be provided to you for approval at your December 11th, 2023 City Council meeting. So again, the draft ordinance is provided to you this evening. Um, for hopeful approval at the December 11th meeting. Uh, it is recommended City Council discuss, establish the tax levy amount, and approve resolution 2023-60. Thank you. Any comments or questions? We kind of do this, it's been this 4.9%. I think this year uh, there were a number of people that were, I think, surprised that when they received their tax assessment. Most people, it was like 8.5%. My neighbor was like 15%. We're at a time where inflation is high, student loans, they're going to be repaid. I mean, I, I, I don't see a reason to need to, to raise it necessarily. I guess we haven't been, been given one. You know, given all this other stuff that, that I think the public has, um, has against them, um, I think it might be wise to, to pass on the raise of the levy this year. Anyone else have a comment? I, I would like to echo his comments as well, uh, especially when you, the tax assessment. On the numbers that you're estimating, the 880, 487, that's based on just a percentage over last year's levy, correct? Yeah, so, uh, so what more I'm, can help. What well, my point is, it was like, so then if people's property is being assessed even more, you're gonna, that revenue is gonna be actually higher than the, what you're estimating, would it not? Uh, I don't think that's correct. No. Last year we budgeted roughly forty for the property tax, forty thousand dollars less than this year. I think the four point nine was roughly forty thousand 
That's it. That's spread across from every, each and every parcel. It doesn't matter if you went up 15% or 2%. Um, we have always been advised to annually to do the most uh, without a public hearing and everything, which is, is less than 5%. And that is to capture, literally to capture the new housing development. That if we don't impose that, and more, more explains this very, very well, um, you're capturing that in their first year on the tax rules. Is that correct? You, can you expand? When you know all these new houses are coming in Sage Meadows, they actually have a lower rate and don't increase it because when they increase it every year, then it says, okay, now you have 2,800 homes, you're going to take that 880,000 and cover that. So you clean those 2,800 homes. So your property tax may actually decrease, not increase, even though we're getting more money because we have more homes we're getting. And that, that's a good point. I, I shared some property tax information with you a couple of meetings ago, but I can I can give you a spreadsheet from 2015 to current with this 4.9% increase, and I can show demonstrate to you and show you where a person a property's tax decreased for that year because there was 40 homes built instead of 20. So. It, this is not 4.9% on what I pay. 4.9% that figure spread out over the entire new parcels and old parcels. Correct. I think one of the biggest challenges with understanding the process of the levy is it's comparing apples and oranges. And you would think when we're talking taxes and budgets and line items, you would compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges, but that's not how the levy works. Right. So by by having that 4.9% increase over what was levied last year, it's not increasing what the taxpayers are paying by 4.9%. And in fact, if, if the city were interested in doing the truth and taxation hearing, um, you know, the levy amount could could easily be 8%. Um, so what you're levying does not always equate anything more in taxes. Yeah. But I it's, concur. It's not, it, it's just not a concrete concept. It's, um, you know, hopefully if any taxpayers approach any of us as city council members, Mara and Terry would be the people to send them to for the numbers. <laughs> But the message that we can all relay is a 4.9% levy over last year's levy does not mean your taxes are going up 4.9%. Right. It means we're asking for 4.9% more than we got last year. We could ask for a billion dollars. We can ask for whatever we want, but it doesn't mean we'll get it. Anyone else? Is there a motion to prove uh, to? Pass a resolution 2023-50 truth and taxation law resolution. Move. Is there a second? Second. Any other co comments, questions? Hearing or seeing none, I need to roll call. Ms. Vogt? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? No. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All the persons reports this evening. Let's start with uh, nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Nothing tonight, Tom. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Brian. Nothing. John. No, sir. Andrea. Mr. Burris. No, sir. Wendell. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Well, I see we're moving towards. Uh, Becoming totally Christmas. The guys are out doing the work. Some on the ladders, hooking up the lights. Looks like things are moving along nicely. The squares decorated. Stores are starting to get decorated. I think that's a, a thing we've not seen quite enough of in the past few years. So I hope the stores get into it a little more. If you didn't take the opportunity during the daylight hours, look when you leave tonight. 
The water tower is bright white and finished, and the drop claws are on the ground. So I'm assuming they are pretty well done. They certainly fought the weather pretty extensively. The wind's been blowing 20 plus miles an hour for several days. They had rain, they had some cold and some hot. So uh, it looks great. It's, it's bright white and it looks good. So uh, my congratulations to them. Terry, are they close to finish? I, yeah, I think everything's done except uh, the logo. The logo. Yeah. Other than that, that's all I got. Thank you. When's that supposed to be? Now, I'm just going to ask because I'm hoping next week. Uh, we we looked at the we we were going to look at the placement on Friday. Scott Bailey and I and Kevin Rose came in Friday, and um, so hopefully next week. Okay. Thank you. Eric. No. Mike. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Police Chief's report, Chief Ross. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in front of you have the monthly reports. Uh, I would like to remind you, even though criminal offenses looks like they almost doubled, but that is mostly all of our follow-up and everything else is just how it's logged in the computer. Uh, we didn't have 73 new crimes. We had crime, but it was just all the follow-ups that we have to do for that. Uh, on top of that, we also took in 107 pounds worth of prescription drugs. Uh, that doesn't cost us anything to get rid of. Uh, we teamed up with another company and they provide that service to us for free and have for the past, I believe over six or seven months, uh, which is very beneficial to us because now we don't have to spend two, three, four hours outside of a burner just trying to light it all on fire. So uh, on top of that, last Thursday, we had a very good meeting with uh, Pike County FS. I wanna thank uh, Jim Stetson for meeting with uh, myself, uh, Jim Grabarczyk and Clay Dobson. Uh, we got an idea of kind of where they're coming from, where we're coming from. They're going to uh, let us know if there's going to be an anhydrous uh, application uh, that abuts next to town. Uh, unfortunately, what happened last Monday night, uh, roughly around the end of our budget meeting, uh, was just a, a, a perfect storm. Uh, Mid 50s, uh, the knives weren't into the ground on the turns. Uh, and then no, really no wind until about 9, 9.30 uh, to actually get that anhydrous to move on. So, uh, but no, we had a very good 45 minute meeting. Uh, like I said, there's gonna be a lot more communication with us. They have actually reached out to us and then I think the fire department that Sunday uh, to do some training. They're very apt, you know, very welcoming to say, hey, if you guys wanna do some training with us, They'll play along, so that's that's a great thing to have for us. So. That it. Thank you. Fire Chief's report, John Rupke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you everybody for approving Jason McLean. Uh, it's always good to have another firefighter. Um, we ran 38 calls last month. Um, last month we had our open house on the uh, 14th of the month, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for attending. I sure do appreciate seeing you there. Uh, you guaranteed me. You guaranteed me good weather, and it was not. It was not good. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit better. But, uh, we still got. We still got a good turnout, right? You know, and all the kids had fun, and and uh, we had some good demonstrations. So thank you for that. Uh, and we spent some time doing preparation for that. Uh, the last uh, week of the month, we did uh, IF, IFSI. Uh, we got a cornerstone grant, or they do, and they provide training for different fire departments. And we had roof ventilation last. Well, that meeting, what they do is they bring a trailer. Oh, it's about the size of the middle of this room, and it's got a platform on it where we put plywood on it, and we we get on top of it. We cut holes in the roof like you would be on top of somebody's roof. It also can angle, so we get angles on a roof, or it could be flat. But it teaches firefighters how to cut and ventilate a roof um, with chainsaws and and uh, circular saws and so forth. So uh, we had not just our department, but we also got to have Cisco was there. Um, it was a joint. It was a joint effort. So we appreciate that. Um, we uh, serviced uh, Eli Field for the last time this year, this season, in October, and last football game too. Uh, we were out at that. Uh, we also attended the local emergency planning committee meeting, uh, which is a group of uh, emergency uh, responders, uh, police, uh, the city. Um, um, Public Works was there, and we just go over different scenarios, talk about different scenarios that could happen in town, like in Hydras. And um, 
uh, what we would do if something like that happens. So we're going to meet on a quarterly basis and go over things like that. Um, I think that's about it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Steve? City Administrator's Report, Terry. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, again, thank thank you all for attending its session last Monday night. We got a lot, went through a lot. Um, uh, and again, if you have any questions, um, please reach out to me. Um, we can discuss them and have some information to share with the council. Um, and then Public Works guys, um, they are now working on sidewalk from middle school to pregame sports. It's a collaboration with Monticello Community Unit School District 25 and the city of Monticello. Um, there were a lot of safety concerns. Young folks uh, walking from the middle school to pregame on Monticello Road. Um, maybe the shoulder of said road. So uh, hopefully that sidewalk gets finished in the next couple of weeks. Go ahead. Thank you. Any questions of Terry? Uh, once more, I'd like to apologize for my foibles this evening. I don't know what it was. Must have been the water we <laughs> had for supper. <laughs> I, it's just the way it happens sometimes. And hearing, I, we're done with our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. I thought there was going to be one. Second. <laughs> Second. Second. Opposed. In favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. See you next week. <laughs>